good to have you all. Guess what? Today is day what? Day three. Day three. And I'm excited about day three with you. Okay. Those of you that are watching after I'm done, put in the chat hashtag replay so that I know that you watched the replay <laughs> and you were not on with me live, but the replay will be open. Those of you that are already on, go ahead and share. Share this video because I'm telling you, your friends, your family, coworkers, your colleagues, they're all going to want to hear this message on today. And I, uh, I'm coming for those leaders, transformation leaders, women and men who make a difference, the game changers, the agents of change, those of you that develop others, but yet need developing. Those of you that speak into the lives of others, but also need someone to speak into your life. Those of you that help others advance, but need someone to help you get to the next level and make your next power move. Absolutely. You can be a powerful person and get stuck right where you are. And I am here to help you make that shift, make that move into your next level of power so that you show up in your authenticity, in your genius, and in the way that you're supposed to show up at this age, your age, present age, at this phase in your life, because this phase in your life is not the same as when you were 20 and 30 and 40 and or 50 right? And this stage, what stage of your life are you in? What season of your life are you in? And you need to know when it's time to make a move, when it's time to make a shift, when it's time to go to another place. And we'll talk about this during the 30 days, but I know some of you all think once you have a purpose, that your purpose is your purpose for your whole life. And that is not true. Your purpose changes, it shifts, it moves. It moves, it shifts, and it grows with you. And a lot of times we get stuck in a past purpose that we don't move forward into our present purpose. I'm gonna say that one again. We get stuck in our past purpose that we don't move into our present purpose. And it's very important that you move into your present because the people that are waiting for you and can be touched by you and whose lives you will change, they're waiting for you in your present, not in your past, okay? So today, my topic is gonna hinge off of our training from yesterday. And you all know that we're on a 30-day self-development, self-enhancement, the coming better journey for 30 days. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to set this up here. Um, I'm going to be with you, showing you how to develop, especially those of us that are in leadership. We are really bad with developing one's self or ourselves because we're so busy developing others. And we get stuck in the development and the success of other people. And then we find ourselves not developing, not enhancing our lives, not growing and not becoming who we're supposed to be at this very age, phase and stage in your life, okay? So self-development, one of the things that we talked about that self-development brings out is um, self-awareness. You need to become aware of yourself, especially my women leaders. You need to become aware of yourself. I teach a lesson and I, and I have a, a, a teaching and a training that I teach and it's escape the cave. Take the cave off at some point in time and become aware of what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what makes you up, what makes you down, you know, what brings, uh, you know, self-esteem issues? Or do you have self-esteem issues? Are you overconfident? Are you not confident at all? You need to become aware of who you are to even become a better leader, 
to be even become a better transformational coach or to even become, you know, that better CEO of your company. I know you sit in the C-suite. I know you have the high, you know, um, accolades and you have the degrees and you have all of these things that you have accomplished, but yet we as leaders, we as strong women and strong men, we as developers, we can get ourselves not work on who? Ourselves. And so we, we talked about um, self-awareness being very, very important, being aware of your strengths and your weaknesses. We tapped on this a little bit on yesterday, and I want to deep dive into it just a little bit more on today. Y'all ready to go with me? Come on, put that mask, that snorkeling mask on, and let's take this dive, okay? So I don't really want to deal with strengths on today. I just want to deal with weaknesses. Yesterday, we made it very clear that weaknesses have the potential, can become your strength. You can use your weakness. So I want to deal with three phases or three things concerning weaknesses. One thing is you have to em embrace it, accept it. Great word. Accept your weaknesses, accept your flaws. Accept the areas that you're not good at. Try not to be that superwoman, right? Escape the cape. Don't try to do everything, especially the things that you're not that good in, especially the areas that you need improvement in. And it's okay. It's okay to say I'm weak in a certain area. I'm not strong in that particular area. I have um, work that can be done in this area. Does that make you less than? Does that make you not a leader? Does that not make you a powerful woman? Does that take away from your strengths? No, it does not, especially when you accept them. Matter of fact, it makes you even stronger right? The acceptance of your weaknesses, the acceptance of your flaws, the embracing of them makes you strong where you're able to say, hey, I need help in this area. Hey, I'm not the best person for that. Or hey, can someone assist me in getting better in this area? that shows a sign of strength that you're able to ask for help. A lot of times when we're the main helper, we don't want to ask for help. A lot of times when we're the main nurturer, we don't want to ask for nurturing. When we're the teacher, we don't want to be taught. We want to appear to know everything because if we feel like or if we express or if we show any signs of weakness and or ignorance to a topic or a situation we feel like people might think we're inferior that we're less than that we're not capable so we tend to hide or be ashamed of our weaknesses but I'm telling you today as a strong leader, I want you to embrace that thing. I want you to accept, accept your strongs and your weaks. Matter of factly, the Bible tells us that when we are weak, it makes him and gives him the opportunity to be strong in our lives. So really, if I had to lay that on you, I would say that your weaknesses are even stronger than your strengths. Why? Because in your weaknesses, God compliments you by coming into your weakness. And so therefore, if God is in my weakness, surely my weakness is stronger than my strength. I hope you got that. Yes. And so in my weakness, he is made, made strong. He shows me how to use my weakness for his glory. And he gets the glory out of my weakness. Hmm. 
I want you to think about that. Okay? So first thing is to accept it. Accept your weakness and embrace it. And realize that it is a part of who you are. It's a part of how you've been made. And so it's what makes you unique. It's what makes you different. It's what makes you stand out from everyone else. Okay, so that's the one thing that I wanted to um, bring about three points in your weaknesses. So the one, one is to accept it. And let me just say this, that the goal of improving yourself should be to look beyond those weaknesses that are stopping you from achieving greatness. Accept your weaknesses. Number two is going to be identify where they stem from. And then the number three that I'm going to deal with today is be determined to overcome them. So if I can get somebody to type that in the chat, even if you're on replay, accept, identify, overcome. The A-I-O. The A-I-O. Accept, identify, and overcome. All right? And so accept your weaknesses, identify them, and then overcome, identify what triggers them. Let me put it that way, right? And then overcome them. It's not easy, but it's certainly not impossible to change your perception and your concept of your weaknesses. And that's what the problem is for most of us while we don't want to um, accept and embrace our weaknesses because of our perception of our weaknesses. We feel that our weakness makes us less than, but really in all actuality, your weakness makes you not more than, but it makes you stand out more. Yes. Let your journey of self-improvement turn every weakness into a strength. Yes, let your journey of becoming better turn your weaknesses into a strength and only take you upward. Your weaknesses don't take you down. It's only the way you perceive them. Your weaknesses take you upward. If you perceive them and you put them in perspective correctly. So let me move forward. <laughs> the AIO, yes. And so, except you cannot turn a weakness let me say this, you cannot turn a weakness into a strength if you're not willing to accept the weakness. People address you with the weakness and you say, oh no, that's not me. Oh no, I don't have that. Oh no, you got the problem. And you become so defensive, right? No, say absolutely. And so you cannot turn a weakness. Matter of fact, you can't fix anything until you first accept that it's broken. Yes. You cannot change anything until you first realize that it needs changing. So the first thing is acceptance and do not deny that it exists. Do not deny that it exists. I'm going to tell you a story. I own a home. I own a few homes. And... There's, could be a stain, and this has happened. There's been a stain up in the ceiling of the living room or a bedroom. And then everybody's like, oh, you got a water stain up there. And you're like, oh no, that's an old water stain from years ago. Don't worry about that. There's nothing wrong. People are like, well, maybe you've got a leak. Maybe you've got a flaw. Maybe you've got a weakness. And you're saying, oh, no, that's not what that is. That happened from, you know, something else. And it's just the, the, the heat in the atmosphere. You know, we start making up excuses for it. So we try to compensate for it. And then instead of thinking, maybe I have a leak in my roof and maybe the water is getting into the attic area. And maybe it's ruining and rottening the wood. And maybe it's causing damage to the upper level of my home. 
So what happens is you ignoring it or not accepting it or not um, coming to grips with it, all it will do is cause more damage in the background. Yes. All it will do is cause more damage, your personality, your character, and, and now you're growing more and you're leading more and you're out front more and more people have their eye on you. Can I tell you, now is not the time for us to realize that you've got rotten wood in the attic. Now is the time for us to realize that your roof is about to cave in. Now is not the time for us to realize that you've had a slow, steady leak all your life that you refuse to address that you refuse to accept and that you refuse to make the changes to fix. Yeah. Okay. So number two, I want to move into um, identify. Matter of fact, I want to say this first before I go into identify. And, and I'm going to deal with this at the end. But I want to tell you, your weakness is your identifier of who your purpose group is. Some people say target market. Some people say niche, whatever. I call it purpose group, who you were purposed for. Somebody put that in the, somebody put that in the, the chat. Who's my purpose group? Who is my purpose group? But guess what? Your weakness is an identifier of your purpose group. Why? Because you can relate to their pain because you've been there, because you've done that. Because you were that girl, you were that guy. And now your, your message is relatable. Your message is targeted and your message is not um, imposter syndrome of someone else's message that you're trying to duplicate. This message is authentic. Why? Because it comes from my very own weakness. Can't nobody tell it like I can tell it. Can't nobody teach it like I can teach it. Can't nobody transform others like I can because of my very own transformation by first accepting my weakness, therefore identifying what has caused my weakness and therefore overcoming my weakness. Now I can take people through the three steps that I've used to overcome this thing. And now I've created a new business. Now I've created a new course. Now I've leveraged my life. Somebody put that in the chat. Leverage your life. Using your weaknesses to identify your target market, your niche, or what I call it, your purpose group. Yes, because they will identify with your pain and they will need your product. Can't talk about that right now. Real quick, I got to get out of here with you all. And so identify where they come from. Identify where your weaknesses come from. Sometimes it could come from the pattern of our parents. Sometimes it could come from a culture that we grew up in. You know, um, I'll just be honest, transparent moment, you know, what? As a leader, people expect for you to be on time because you're leading the group. I had a hard time with that. Still, I still almost have a hard time with that. Trying to work on it though, trying to overcome it, trying to realize that it's very important. But I'll say, I've had several family members and it just is it's, it's a cycle. It's a cycle, but you've got to realize where it stemmed from. Realize that it's a weakness. Realize that it's something that you need to overcome. But first thing is you have to accept it and not reject it. There was a point in time in my life where people would say, oh, you always late. Make sure you on time. And I would get offended. Girl, bye. What you talking about? Get up out of here. Even though I knew that was me. <laughs> But I was offended by it. I was like, how dare you? I'm always on time. I was in traffic. I this, I that. Made up all kinds of excuses, right? Big stain in the ceiling. 
why don't you fix that leak instead of making excuses for why the stain is up there? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Deetra. It's okay, right? But then I had to identify, hey, you need to get prepared a little bit earlier. Hey, stop trying to do 1,500 things before you know you have something else to do. You can't get it all done in a day. So some things might not be able to get done. Prioritize your day and realize there's some things that you can do tomorrow because if you start trying to do that today, it's going to make you late for a priority. Anyway, I'm just talking about me. So identify where they come from. Why are you weak in an area? Is it because you are mentally and verbally abused? And so you feel like, and it doesn't have to happen from a husband. It could have happened from a teacher, from a coach. It could have happened from the bully on the field. They said, oh, you don't play well. Don't nobody want to pick you. You're always last pick for the game or for, for gym class or whatever have you. And now it has put a stigma on you where it has now become a weakness, where you're not confident, where you're not comfortable, where you don't come to the front or whatever the case may be. And so you've got to identify where it stems from so that you can properly deal with it and realize that you are more than enough in every area of your life, even in the areas where you're weak. <laughs> and so let me get to my last one. The last one is overcome it, overcome it. Be prepared for it, right? That's something that I talked about with timing. If you know you have a weakness in an area, just say, for instance, you're, you're not good with um, directions. You have no sense of direction is what people call it. I have that 50-50. Sometimes I get a sense of direction and sometimes I don't have a good sense of direction, right? You start saying go north. I'm like, what the world? What is that? Just tell me right or left. Stop with the north, the south, the east, the west thing. Just tell me which way to go. So I don't have a real good, great sense of direction. I am sort of weak in that area. But when, so to try not to be late, right? If I know I don't have a good sense of direction, you know, you may have a possibility of getting lost. Be prepared to overcome your weakness by preparing yourself for what you know you're weak in. I'm weak in traveling and directions. So let me get started 30 or 45 minutes earlier just in case I get twisted around, just in case I lose my bearings, just in case I get caught on the wrong side of town, right? So be prepared. So overcoming it is get in front of it. Don't let it overtake you, but you handle it. Don't let it handle, don't let your weaknesses handle you. You handle your weakness by getting on top of it, getting in front of it, being proactive and not reactive. Okay. Hey, I'm going to talk about this as we go along in the 30 days, but either you do it don't do it or ditch it. And in some instances, you don't need to do it if it's a weakness and it's going to cause you time. It's going to cause you a lot of energy, therefore possibly causing you frustration. And so to keep your peace, maybe you need to outsource your weakness. Maybe you need to accept going to someone and say, I need you to assist me. Take your pride down, Miss Leader, Miss Kate Girl who's superhuman and the superhero and always does it well and always does it right and always is perfect. So you cannot let people see a flaw because you've already given this persona of perfection. And so now your pride gets in the way of outsourcing help to compensate for your weakness. And it's called relationship currency. Relationship currency. Find someone who you have a relationship with so that they can compensate for where you lack. All right. And then the other thing that I have for you is get good enough at it to at least be able to operate in it. Be good, get good enough at it to be able to at least operate in it. Like I'm not good with technology, right? But I've been learning to at least get good enough at it so that I can function and flow at a certain level, probably not at the best and greatest level. That's where I have to 
don't do it and find somebody else that can do it and admit that it's not my area of expertise, but it takes nothing away from my genius. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So as I end on today, I hope you got those three points, the A-I-O, yes, and that is accept it, identify what caused it, what's causing it, if it's continual, and then overcome it, overcome it, weaknesses. I heard this phrase, and I'm going to repeat it to you all on today, aggravation is the mother of invention, especially those of us that walk in leadership especially those of us that walk in the development of others, the transformation of others. Aggravation is the mother of invention. Trust me, I know. Your weakness can lead you to your next discovery, your next project, your next purpose group, your next market, place, adventure. Your weakness can be your driving point. I know there's a really profound, I can't even think of her name right now because it's coming off the dome right now, a really profound motivational speaker. And she speaks basically on shame. That's all she talks about. And she travels all across the world talking about how to overcome shame. Y'all can look it up. Maybe she'll come up. But guess what? She's a high-ticketed price speaker. All she talks about is shame. And the way she got into this profession, into her purpose, into her prosperity, even to being a high-ticketed price speaker is because she identified no, she accepted, identified, and overcame the shame that she had in her own life and then realized that it was a pain point, not only for her, but it was a pain point for others. God designed you to meet the pain point of other people. They want to know if you have a solution or an answer to their problem, to their pain, to their dilemma. And guess what? You are the answer to someone's problem, someone's pain, someone's dilemma. Only though when you realize that you had pain, you had a problem, you had a dilemma, and you're not afraid to share it, show it, and help others overcome it. All right? So I am done on today. Was that not so but good? Yes, yes it was. And so just to repeat, we're dealing with weaknesses and realizing that you can make them a strength, right? You can make your weakness a worth. You can become worth more to others by exposing your weakness. All right. So guys, share this video. Please like the page, put in the comments, let others know, especially powerful women that you know, women that are walking in leadership, men that are walking in leadership. They need to hear this video. I want you to share it, share it with others. I'm Dr. Dietra. You are on my page. I am there to help you Take your pain, create it into a passion. Take those challenges and create change, right? Take those tragedies and make it triumphant. Take your brokenness and make you better. I love you guys. You have a great day. Share the video, make some comments, like the page, let others know. Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.